Teasel's Tudor Trivia. Hi, welcome to this edition of Teasel's Tudor Trivia with me, Claire, and Teasel the dog. Now, in my On This Day videos in the past on a Tudor person's death, I sometimes mention their heart and or entrails being buried separately to their body. And this often causes comment with viewers wanting to know why and whether this was normal practice in Tudor times. So today I thought I'd explain the practice with the help and supervision of Teasel and various dogs in the background as well, and give you some examples of prominent people's uh, burials, um, prominent people's remains that were buried in different places. So why bury the heart and entrails separately from the rest of the body? Well, it was actually a practical thing to do. These were the parts of the body that decomposed the fastest. Isn't that true, Teasel? Yeah, she's just checking that I'm getting everything right. And if you were a prominent person whose body might be put on view for a time, or you might lie in state, then simply washing and shrouding your remains wasn't going to be good. You'd start to smile, you'd start to go off. Or if you died far from the place that you'd chosen as your resting place and your remains had to be transported, then the heart and entrails needed to be dealt with and buried perhaps locally. Back in the 12th century, King Henry I of England died in Rouen in France. So his organs were buried at Rouen. That was a practical thing to do. And then his body was taken back to England and buried at Reading Abbey. It also meant, separate burial also meant that you could honour different places with the burial of different parts of you. Or you could simply choose different places that were special to you. Or you could be buried with different people like your first wife and your second wife or so on. So separate burial of the heart was actually common. It wasn't unusual. And it was actually very common during the Crusades with the knights that went on the Crusades because men would die far from home and it was easier to bring the heart back to England in something like a silver vessel than the whole body. Hugh, Earl of Stafford, died in Rhodes and his heart and bones were brought back to England by his squire for burial. Richard the Lionheart, for example, had three separate burial places. His body was buried in Fontevraud, his entrails buried at Chalouse, and his heart in Rouen. And now here are some examples of Tudor people whose hearts or entrails were buried separately from their body. Arthur Tudor, eldest son of King Henry VII and first husband of Catherine of Aragon, died in 1502 at Ludlow Castle. And his heart was buried in the Castle's St. Mary Magdalene Chapel, while his body was buried at Worcester Cathedral. When diplomat Thomas Savage died in 1507, his heart was buried at St. Michael's Church Macclesfield and his body at York Minster. In 1533, when Thomas Skevington, abbot of Bewley and Bishop of Bangor died, his heart was buried at Bangor Cathedral and his body at Bewley. Then in 1537, we have the death of Queen Jane Seymour, third wife of King Henry VIII. She died at Hampton Court Palace not long after giving birth to Edward VI. And her heart and entrails were buried in the Chapel Royal at her place of death, Hampton Court Palace. But then the rest of her remains were taken to St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle. After King Henry VIII's death in 1547, his entrails were buried in a lead box in the chapel of Westminster Palace and his body was transported uh, to St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle and laid to rest there with Jane Seymour. In 1558, Queen Mary I's heart was enclosed in a coffer covered with velvet bound with silver and then her body was coffined separately. Then we have the example of John Longland, Bishop of Lincoln, um, who died in 1547. His heart was buried at Lincoln Cathedral and his body at Eton. Then, after his death in November 1555, Stephen Gardner, Bishop of Winchester's entrails, were buried in St Mary Overy in Southwark 
and his body buried in a chantry tomb in his cathedral, Winchester Cathedral. In 1586, following the death of Sir Henry Sidney, Lord Deputy of Ireland, his heart was buried at Ludlow, where he resided as president of the council in the Welsh marches, but his body was buried in the Sydney Chapel, the traditional place of burial for the Sydneys, at Penshurst. Then Martin Frobisher. After his death in November 1594 in Plymouth, his entrails were buried at St Andrew's Church in Plymouth, but his body was taken back to London and buried there at St Giles without Cripplegate. When Anne of Denmark, Queen Consort of King James I, died on the 2nd of March 1619, her entrails were buried at Westminster Abbey on the 5th of March, while her body lay in state at Denmark House from the 9th of March to the 13th of May, so a long time, and then her remains were laid to rest at the Abbey. Following his death in January 1613, the entrails of Sir David Williams, Sergeant at Law in Elizabeth I's reign, were buried at Kingston Bagpews in Berkshire, but his body was buried at St John's Chapel in Brecon. So heart and entrails burial wasn't at all unusual, although if you were a common person, you tend to be buried intact. Now, next time, Teasel and I will be looking at how remains were actually prepared for burial. So we'll be talking about that very soon. Thank you for joining us today. You can, of course, subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. What do you think, Teasel? You think they should click there? Yes, she's saying yes. And you can, of course, give us a like and you can leave us a comment and you can hit the bell to be notified when these videos go live. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Teasel's Tudor Trivia.